We just returned from the women's convention of the Church of God in Christ. And it was a tremendous women's convention indeed. And I'm glad to report to you that some mighty, mighty things happened that Pamela and I were able to be a, a part of. We had a tremendous breakfast with the presiding bishop, our national supervisor, M Mother Lewis, and uh, many of the other great workers of our church, meeting with two of the largest pro-life organizations in the world, Stand for Life and Human Coalition. And I thank God for the uh, union that has been formed between these powerful entities. They're interested in us because we're the only denomination in the world that has a pro-life statement. From voted on and accepted in the General Assembly, the Church of God in Christ is unashamedly pro-life. We stand by children and fight for them while they're in the womb, and we fight for them after they're born that they may live productive lives. And I'm proud to be a part of that. The convention had some awesome preachers and teachers, and God blessed in a mighty way how National Mother preached as never before. Amen. And our presiding bishop reminded us that we're in a spiritual battle. And it was just a tremendous week. I thank God for um, my wife. She did a tremendous job being the MC. Uh, working in the uh, one of the services, the gatherings that they were having, honoring our first lady, first lady uh, Karen Clark Sheard, and we're just grateful to God. And upper room was in the house. Oh, we had about eighty or so at the convention, and our supervisor, uh, she's still down there. Um, she, it was just wonderful seeing her, and had a wonderful reception. It was a great meeting. Unfortunately, with all the great things that did take place, all the talk now is about uh, something that took place that was quite carnal. Most preachers are taught, be careful when you preach. A sentence of carnality can destroy an entire sermon. And with that tremendous women's convention, someone thought it was a good idea, I don't know who, to welcome Mickey and Minnie Mouse to the service and uh, I'm sure you saw it. We're not going to show it. Um, that it has enough views out there online as it is. Um, I don't know who was responsible. And I don't know if they know that the Disney Corporation has taken positions that are repugnant and antithetical to the positions of the God of the Bible and the Church of God in Christ. Disney is one of the most woke businesses uh, that there is. Disney has embraced transgenderism. Uh, Disney, uh, the fight that Governor DeSantos and Disney got uh, in right now is because Disney as a company got into politics and tried to shape the politics of the state of Florida. And the governor's response, which I think was the proper one, was to strip them of the special considerations that they were getting because they shouldn't be giving them anyway. And then when you try to use your weight to determine policy. Disney is, is on the side of drag queens reading books to, to kids in school. Disney is, has become a wicked company. And so I don't know why uh, Mickey and Minnie was invited into the pulpit of our women's convention um, and then called elder and um, evangelists. Um, First Peter 5, 1 Peter said, I also am an elder. The apostle Peter was an elder. Uh, every bishop, every superintendent, every pastor, uh, every member of the general board, the presiding bishop, all of us are elders. You have to become an ordained elder to become any of these things. And for someone to use that uh, title, that sacred designation for such a uh, secular creature uh, is not a good thing at all. It was quite uh, disgraceful and distasteful. Um, and uh, to call many an evangelist. 
which is the, the, the office of the evangelist, is one of the fivefold ministries of the church. And most certainly, many, many miles is not an evangelist. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Have you all heard many miles talk about Jesus? Have you ever seen many uh, promote uh, salvation? Has uh, Mickey, to your knowledge, promoted salvation? Well, then most certainly they shouldn't be called elder nor evangelist. And so just a stain, I, I needed to address it because people have been reaching out to me. And, and one, of, one of the things that we all know now, the Internet has changed everything. And whatever you do on the national level regards to who you are, that thing goes all the way around the world and affects all of us, even back home. And whereas I am a proud member of the Church of God in Christ and I support our national mother, I support our tremendous leader, and I support our great church, uh, things like that um, uh, I do not support uh, because these uh, people have no place uh, in our church. And see, that, that's one of the reasons why um, the church should just be the church and keep things out of the church that don't belong in the church. See, see, it's easy. see what happens is you lose your ability to discern. See, once, you, once it's all right to let the, uh, the uh, Masons in and the fraternities and the sororities in, then you almost don't know who to let in and who not. You follow what I'm saying? You lose your ability to discern. The church can't be all things to all people. There is no place in the church for quasi nor pseudo organizations. Quasi, you resemble that which is real. The the Masons, these, these fraternities and sororities, they're quasi. They take on religious actions, such as when one of the members die, they have services in the church, around the casket, when the body is being committed to the ground. That's the domain of religion. That's not the domain of an organization. And you can't have it both ways. You can't be a, a, a religious organization when it's convenient and then be a, a secular one when it's inconvenient. We have to decide do, whether these things belong in the church or not. And the answer is, of course, if you go by scripture, they do not. And when you get saved, if Paul, I've said this a thousand times and I'll probably say it two or three as long as God gives me strength, and I feel pretty good. When Paul came to Jesus, Paul came out of Judaism. Paul says all those things that were gained to me, I counted them but dumb for the more excellent, superior knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How in the world could Paul come out of all that? And then here we are, saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost and still in it. People flashing all kinds of signs, dressing in all kinds of colors, different, bringing all these things into the house of God. That's how Minnie and Mickey and all of them end up on uh, the platform. Amen. It's too much. So you, we have to be careful. Praise the Lord. We have to be careful what we allow so that a, a spiritual good time and a mighty move of God doesn't get marred by a minute of flesh. Because that was nothing but flesh and carnality. Amen. And, and by the way, y'all do know Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse aren't real, right? If you thought they were real, let me see you wave your hand so I can pray for you. They're not real. And uh, uh, that the, 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 our great, great women's convention, and the convention was great, it's for grown people. Now, most grown people aren't entertained by many and make it. If you're one of those adults who are, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. 
And uh, I wonder at, at some point, when do people uh, get grown? Sometimes you see grown men, gray-headed guys, walking around uh, trying to look like they're still a college frat boy. Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, understood as a child, I speak as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Some things you ought to outgrow. Amen. So let's praise the Lord for our women's convention. It was much more than Minnie Mouse and Mickey.